Sorry, that would, that's for a Democrat show. Let me know when you're ready. No matter what the technical difficulty is, this man is a professional. He goes all the way to... What you represent to them is freedom. Was an extremely great conservative commentator. We're tearing it up on Wednesday night. This is awesome. This will allow me to retort. Well, this is Jersey Joe for uh, the Reverb Comic Sense Show. 8 p.m. on shrmedia.com. Actually, I just totally screwed up. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe. And I am, well, holy shit. There goes the whole intro. <laughs> welcome to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, you can go to one if you want to watch a live broadcast or if you want to join the chat. <clears throat> So just go to Reaver.1, click on the live stream button, and be a part of the show. Last but not least, if you want to support the show or support SHR Media, you can go to Reaver.1 backslash shop. That is R-E-A-V-E-R dot O-N-E backslash S-H-O-P. And you can pick yourself up uh, a pro Second Amendment t-shirt. Your uh, pro Black Lives, or excuse me, Blue Lives Matter t-shirts. Oh, had a definite Freudian slip there. Uh, you can get uh, survival bracelets and even a pocket constitution. So go to reaver.one backslash shop. And today on the show, we have a special guest. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Easy? Well, good morning. I mean, it's morning oh, here. Good morning. It's almost the darn afternoon where you are right now. <laughs> yep. Well, great. Thank you for having me on the show. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is the first time that we've had occasion to uh, speak one-on-one. Uh, I met a lot of the people on the Sack Edge Radio Media Network when uh, everybody went to Las Vegas uh, about a month ago or so in July. So that was fun to meet a whole bunch of people there. But this is my first time meeting you, so it's great to see and to hear you. Great to uh, meet you too, sir. And yeah, I couldn't make it uh, financially unable to get out there. <laughs> I wanted to, but eh, couldn't afford it. Well, it was a great time, had by all, and it was great to meet all the uh, other people from SHR Media as well. And now I'm getting to meet you, so uh, it's 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 great. Yeah. So, um, what's your background? Boy, that was quick. <laughs> um, I like to jump right in it. A long time ago in a, in a galaxy far, far away, I was a registered uh, Democrat, and I grew up in a time when uh, being a child would kill you. We had back then in the 50s and 60s what I called combat telephones that were about 75 pounds <laughs> each and had rotary dials, and you had massive index fingers that were ensconced in muscle because of the tremendous amount of, of uh, strength that it t- took to turn a rotary doll telephone. And I started to get into, uh, into politics a bit when I went into uh, college, because the particular year that I, I went into college was not only the summer of love, but it was the same year that, um, let's see, Martin Luther King happened to be assassinated and Robert Kennedy was assassinated. So I thought it was a wonderful thing if I would become a Democrat. So I did. I was a registered Democrat. And then that funny thing happened. I actually got a series of good paying jobs. So once I got some good paying jobs and began to realize where my taxes were actually going, um, I made an amazing discovery. I could change to Republican. And 
probably the the greatest time I ever felt about casting a vote was uh, for Ronald Reagan in the late 70s. And I hate to say it, or it's a great thing to say, uh, Ronald Reagan changed me absolutely around. And then I became a registered Republican. And then some other strange things happened. As is wont to say, the Republican Party, I didn't leave it, but it sort of left me. And then I became a registered uh, independent, and I started blogging back in uh, 2004. And so I've had my blog for about uh, 12 years now. And just recently found the SHR Radio Network. I used to be on radio back at uh, many, many years back in uh, KFBK in Sacramento, and then I went through radio in college and uh, did some other radio shows, went to numerous concerts, lost my hearing, got tinnitus, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for years of wearing headphones like you're wearing right now. Uh, so I came around to be a conservative, and there we go. That's about it in a nutshell. All right. I, I know we never, we have not had the chance yet to really speak yet. So I, I'll give you the background on me a little bit. I never started out doing radio. This is just something. Um, actually, Sean gave me the chance to do about uh, 2014. Um, I at, well, when I turned 16, I started volunteering on a, a fire truck. Uh, just as my dad was a volunteer firefighter, and I ended up getting into the ambulance and made that a career. Up until ooh, about seven years ago when I injured my back. Then I got in a car accident. Things got worse. And I'm actually kind of disabled now. So uh, I, I'm able to voice my opinion. But like you, at one point, I was a Democrat. Then I started really waking up. I went independent. But I still had a little bit of the Democrat leanings because I was believing all the the lies and the bullshit that were being told. And told, like... Uh, I want to say before Obama, but I, I had actually fell for Obama's bull crap when he first got in. I didn't vote for him, but I fell for his bullshit. And that's when I started really waking up to what's going on. And I didn't feel I had a voice. So um, I started doing a podcast. Sean heard it. Um, I had uh, gotten Chris Peronto to do um, an interview with me. This is back in 2004. The book had just come out. And um, it, it Sean oh, the, told me I needed to go, guy, right? huh? The seal guy, Chris Peronto. Well, he's a ranger, but uh, from oh ranger, uh, I'm sorry, he would kill me if I said that. <laughs> uh, the uh, Benghazi, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Sean kept telling me how I had to do it live, so I did like two shows live before interviewing him, and then it's been since then. It's just been keep doing the show and. Um, I just try to get my voice out. I'm, I'm not one of these. I have some college education. I speak plainly. I, I'm not. I don't try to. I, I see a lot of the shows out there. Not all of them. But some of the shows, it seems like they try to impress by everybody by talking above them. So I just try to speak in plain language the way you would have a conversation outside and and uh, it gets me in trouble sometimes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so that's my background for you. Well, you sound like your your transformation was somewhat recent since about uh, uh, roughly, what, 2004, 2008? Well, right two, around in there? Yeah. Well, the transformation uh, to conservative, uh, yeah, I'd say right around 2007, 2008, um, like I, I bought his bullshit, but I didn't vote for him. I actually voted for McCain. Um, but just he, he talked a good game. I know a lot of people that even said that they were conservative, but when he got in office and he gave that speech that first day, you know, they had given him the benefit of the doubt and bought into it, and it really pissed him off that they were proven wrong. Well, you went through uh, something of a rather startling 180 then yourself. It wasn't sort of semi-gradual. It was pretty rapid with you. No, and, and, and once I started learning that what I've been told all these years was a lie, I got more and more pissed off about it. 
because I started looking at what the what all the bullshit they were saying. You know how Republicans are racist or against this or against that. They want to shut down Social Security. They want to kill your puppies. And I really started looking at going, how the hell was I so stupid that I believed all that bullshit? Once I started looking into it, it's like there there's so many holes in their uh, lies. It's not funny. Well, yeah, except for the part about puppy killing. There yeah. is a lot of puppy killing going on. <laughs> Well, you know, I actually thought about doing a commercial. It would be uh, ripping off uh, another commercial I heard. You know, if you don't listen to me, the puppy will get it and have a little puppy crying here at Gun Cock. And... Oh, my God. That's from a 1978 uh, National Lampoon cover. Buy this magazine or we'll shoot this dog. Well, there was also, I can't remember who it was. There was, uh, um, I think it was in the 80s, 90s. Um there was a, a radio show host that did that, too. I, it, I don't think it was Howard Stern. And they did that, they, you know. And they ended up doing some um, albums, actually. And they were playing um, dog baseball. Oh, my. And now I'm going to yeah. get, I'm gonna have to get a, a friend of mine that actually introduced me to that. Oh, God. That's going to drive me nuts all day today now. I like your mug, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they're actually for sale on Reaver dot one. <laughs> so hey, there you go, perfect <laughs> opportunity. Hey, I'll get the plugs in when I can get them. Hey, uh, listen, if you can't promote yourself, who can you promote? Exactly. Uh, I've been married, so I got to promote myself all the time. But I'm bump. Um, <laughs> and I, we were talking off air, and I wanted to bring it up because I I like to talk about everything that goes on, especially when I find it funny. And for those that don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio got in a car accident over the weekend. I think it was over the weekend. Um, He was driving, whether it was his car, some say it was his car, some say it was a friend of his, but he was driving a Land Rover, or a Range Rover, excuse me, when he got in the accident. He was driving an SUV. So a lot of people, including myself, are pointing out the fact that he was driving a Range Rover, which is really hysterical to me. And these people on the left are freaking out that we're pointing out his hypocrisy. And I've gotten told that uh, um, I'm jealous. Um, I'm being the moral police. One even said I threatened him, which is real funny. They pulled a, um, a Hillary Clinton on me. It's it, what the left won't do to protect their false stories. It, it, it's it's sickening almost. Um, and yet here the, here's the funny thing. He had a, uh, or has, a, I guess, a girlfriend named Nina. And I'm looking at an article. It says, Leonardo DiCaprio and Nina Agdahl get into, wait for it, Hampton's car crash. Yep. Uh, well, tell me, Jersey Joe, who happens to live in the Hamptons? Is it people from downtown Chicago or is it the elite? I think I know the answer. Um, Downtown Chicago? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Says the Oscar winner and the model. Are you married to a model, uh, Jersey Joe? I know I'm not. Uh, they went, she should be, but she's not. Uh, good answer. You are going to get husband points at the conclusion of this broadcast, guaranteed. <laughs> It said they were heading east on Montauk Highway in Wayne Scott in a Range Rover at about 4.30 p.m. Saturday when they were struck by a woman driving a Mini Cooper. Now, was the woman struck driving a 1978 Cadillac Seville? Nope. No, it was struck by someone driving a Range Rover. Amazing. In the Hamptons. Well, that's the funny part. He's driving a Range Rover, and she's driving a Mini Cooper. Which one's better for the environment? Uh, actually, if I'm not mistaken, uh, people did a, a study about the Hummer who that isn't made anymore, the Hummer H2, as opposed to a uh, Toyota Prius. And it turned out that the Hummer H2 was much less destructive of the environment than the Prius, if for no other reason than the um, minerals that are required to uh, create the, the lithium-ion battery in the Prius. They're mined in Soviet Russia, mostly. They have to be transported. They have to be acquired and assembled in a factory, and they have to be shipped to Toyota. And then, of course, when the battery pack and the Prius dies, 
You can't just leave it any cost. So that's another $10,000 accessory. And then you have to take the battery pack and either disassemble it, and you have to do something uh, with it with the environment. That's extremely costly. And then, of Point. course, you as a firefighter know that when you get into a vehicle accident with a Prius or another vehicle that uh, has a, a large battery involved, you better be disassembling that car very, very carefully if someone's trapped mm-hmm. inside. If you need to use the jaws of life, you have to make sure that the car, prior to even getting into it, is disconnected from its yep. electric source, etc. cetera. Uh, so, yes, the Hummer H2 is less of a despoiler of the environment than the standard Prius or any other sort of uh, hybrid-type vehicle, like a Nissan Leaf, for example. So, way to go, Hummer. <laughs> of course, that was the evil car, the evil, oh, nasty yeah. car. Well, also, you kind of reminded me of something else when you were talking about disconnecting the battery for the Prius. And um, the one thing a lot of people don't realize when they put the, they think they're being very uh, um, conscious when they put the solar panels on top of their house. The one thing they don't realize is if your house catches on fire, chances of it burning down are highly increased. Because firefighters cannot go up on the roof at that point because and ventilate just to get the hot smoke out and all that. Because there's a tripping hazard on the roof now. Secondly, you cannot shut down the power off those solar panels. They're live 24-7. You can't shut them down. Well, not 24-7, but you know what I mean. You can't shut them down, so there's always electricity flowing. You can't get water anywhere near the roof. So... People's houses are burning down, and they're sitting there going, what the hell? I'm being conscious. I put them up on my house, and now my house burned down because of them. You know, and that's very interesting because that's a point that a lot of people don't even think of when you're talking about uh, an emergency response like that. Unless I'd mentioned that about the Prius, I would imagine that a lot of people that are listening right now don't particularly think about that. I don't think of it either. Certainly. Had never thought about that with regard to if you had a lot of solar panels on the roof. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that's very interesting. My wife happens to live in Ghetto Central right here. So when people say that I don't have any kind of an idea about what's happening with regard to certain minorities, and in, certainly in my neighborhood, I am the minority, <laughs> singular. Uh, so I don't have solar panels, nor am I going to waste the money on, on her house around here. But it's a very interesting observation. Also, um, I noticed that I happen to live in, in uh, California. I call it Fornicalia because it does that to almost everything that it touches. <laughs> but in the process of that, there's uh, a lot of uh, farmland in the central California and Sacramento Valley. And because of the various leftist leanings, it was decided that uh, particular companies were going were to come in and farmers sold the land to solar farms. So. In the brilliance of leftists, because California is one of the uh, the breadbaskets of the world and certainly of the left coast, and a lot of that stuff, I'm sure, produce goes all around the United States, it was in the infinite wisdom decided that they would put lengthy solar panels uh, all through uh, probably close to 200-plus acres of beautiful, fertile, fornicalia land – and then cover this land with solar panels so that the farmers who sold that land can no longer grow produce there. Huh, how very sad. Isn't it um, California they have – I forget what it's called, so forgive me. I didn't plan on bringing it up. But they have that uh, solar um, array where it's mirrors and they point it to a tower and it heats water up to generate the steam, to generate electricity, but they had to shut it down because it was killing too many birds. But the uh, cow... Go ahead. Um, That's down in Southern California. I'm up in Northern California, so I don't know that much about that. But here's the other interesting thing. Uh, Now the various leftists um, are saying that uh, the various wind turbines that are around here that uh, because never are they all working at once because that's just the nature of wind. Imagine that, God not creating wind 24-7. But um, global the warming. wind turbines in uh, global warming <laughs> uh, are not turning, and a lot of uh, environmentalists are against wind power now because it kills too many birds. Yep. You know what I think is a perfect idea 
is all these various leftists who think that it's it's you know, various forms of power. You have to get power somewhere, otherwise their iPads and I, iPhones are certainly not going to work. I think we get a bunch, thousands of exercise bicycles, attach magnetos to them, and have leftists bicycle these things in in groups of of thousands, line them all up so that they can create magneto electric power. And then they just have shifts. They bicycle for eight hours. It, it makes them great legs. They have huge thighs. And then they create electric power. I think that's a great idea. They won't do it. That, that means they would have to get a job. Oh, crap. Yeah, there's always uh, the fly in the ointment. <laughs> uh, it, it, no matter which way you go with it, they're always – I mean – I love how they talk about these cars. Well, these cars are going to be the greatest. Well, how does it get its electricity? Well, you plug it in at night. Okay. Where does electricity come from? The power plant. You mean the coal power plant that you now have to burn more coal to create more electricity because you're plugging your damn car in. Yeah, that. But I'm saving the environment. That's when you want to just have that rubber mount just walking around pulling cartoons and be bopping them on the head as you go along. Ugh. But see, that's an excellent point. I've been saying that for quite some time. If you want to go to electric vehicles, and it seems as though that's the uh, the push at this point, Tesla is selling a lot of vehicles funded by the U.S. government, as a matter of fact, as you and I both know. Yeah. But if you sell more electric cars, where are you going to get the electricity? Because according to the environmentalists and the various leftists, there is no real acceptable form of electric production. I don't think this country has produced uh, an electrical generation station in quite some time. Certainly it hasn't happened in, in uh, California. The thing that surprises me about uh, California is the fact that San Diego is in the process of, of building a multi-billion dollar um, seawater, salt seawater <laughs> conversion plant down in, uh, in Southern California. I'm quite surprised that that got through. But in terms of electrical production, I, I quite frankly don't know of any new electrical production plants that are here on the left coast. And we already have brownouts in the summer out here on the left coast. Uh, the, uh, there's a – I can't think of the, the name of it, but there's a Central California distributor that monitors the power and decides where they're going to get the power and, and uh, move it over to various portions of the grid, but if we're already having electrical problems, and if we create more electric vehicles and demand a greater drain on the electrical system, where are we going to get that power? You make an excellent point. Where are we going to okay. get that power? Uh, it, it, I don't understand, and what, and going a little bit different direction too. Again, and I'm sorry. Uh, it, here in Florida and Tampa, we have a lot of coal power plants. And the air is beautiful down here. Trust me, I come from New Jersey. The air is beautiful down here. And the restrictions that Obama keeps putting through his EPAs on these plants has caused the cost of electric or coal-powered plants to skyrocket. So what do the left idiots down here do? Start attacking our Republican govern governor, blaming him for it. I'm like, because uh, back in 2014, um, we had the elections for the governor. And there was a couple of idiots blaming him. I'm like, no, it's not. Well, you're just on his side. I'm like, no. You have to look at Obama's EPA regulations, you morons. You have to look and see all the restrictions that you, well, we have to do that for the environment. And I'm like, what do you think it's going to happen when they have to pay more money to put in 20,000 more goddamn uh, filters into these plants? Where are they going to get that money? Oh, they have to raise the prices. Bingo, you moron. Oh, yeah, I am screwing myself. Our, our prices are, are going up. I mean, our governor has done a great job on trying to keep them down by not allowing an increase. But, uh, I mean, it's it, the power cost is going up exponentially because Obama keeps making it stricter regulations. And now he's doing it with the truckers. He keeps screwing over with their trucks. On the emissions, he just made changes recently, and what did he do again this past week? Made more changes. And our truckers are may not be able to drive on the road because of this. I can't wait till we get, hopefully, a Republican president that's not going to be going around trying to kill every business just because of this um, 
uh, 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 global warming crap. I get so sick of it. Sorry. Well, the funny thing about coal is you can't convince me that you can't make clean coal power. The technology probably exists for all the scrubbers and that kind of thing like that. And My I dad put those scrubbers in in the 70s, and he said that, oh, right. that what was coming out is almost zero. They, but you can't convince me. If you, you remember, Obama said that uh, you can have coal power, but I'm going to make it so expensive for you to build new coal plants uh, that you're essentially going to go out of business. And he said that uh, openly. Yeah. Uh, and so he's making sure that uh, he gets rid of his coal power plants. You know, and I, I have nothing uh, particularly against a greener power. I don't and either. How, power cannot come from one specific source. The greatest, most efficient source of power right now is coal or petroleum or gas, one of those three primary uh, products. And it's a petroleum source, petroleum-based uh, economy right now. And if you want to transition, that's fine, but you cannot rely on one particular source. You cannot rely specifically on wind power. Yep. You cannot rely specifically on solar. You cannot uh, rely specifically uh, on geothermal or water production, for example. Uh, so you have to have a combination of all of those various things. And for God's sake, in this, this state and uh, certainly in the rest of the nation, you're not going to go nuclear. There's a big problem with nuclear in the first place. If you happen to be on Google, right now we're going through uranium-plutonium reactors. One of the finest, uh, most effective reactors extant right now is from a uh, mineral called thorium. And if you Google thorium reactors, you're going to find something very, very inter interesting about that. When you begin to, to look into thorium reactors, and the industry around here is not going to change unless they're dragged kicking and screaming to thorium. Thorium is an extremely common element, element and much more easy to mine. But despite that, we're not going to go to thorium. And number two, we're not going to go to electric, uh, excuse me, to nuclear reactors here in uh, the United States. Well, we so got a couple here in Florida. In place, what is it that leftists imagine that we're going to do to, to source our electricity? They, they want what they want when they want it, but it's certainly not practical to do all of those things. So I do not see any pie in the sky. Uh, solution to the problem. No. But even if there is a solution, and it's a multifaceted solution, you don't just stop everything and then go to another source. You have to blend it in and sort of taper off a bit as you bring other sources in. But they want to completely kill coal, kill petroleum, and that's not the way to handle our electricity. That's just not the way okay. to do it. Well, you have to have a viable replacement and ready to go and already in um, in the works before you go killing coal and petroleum. And that's what they are doing it the opposite way. You're going, well, if we kill these two, we'll figure out how to, you know, put in something else in its place. That's not the way it kind of works. I'm gonna have to cut you off real quick. We got to go to break, and we'll be, you know, back. Hopefully, you can stick around. Um, you're more, uh, hopefully you'll stick around a while today. But uh, we're gonna go to break, and uh, you're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising, YouTube Speaker, and iTunes. We will be right back. Listening to the SHR Media Network. Now, Brownells, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. 
My name is Chris Peronto, call sign Tonto. I was with the Global Response Staff. We were the security element for the Central Intelligence Agency in Benghazi, Libya on 9-11-2012. Uh, myself and my team responded to an attack that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, and two of my teammates, Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Radical Islam is basically terrorism in a nutshell. It, uh, it wants to not only put down Western values, it wants to kill anybody that supports those Western values, which is freedom, which is Christianity, and which is also anything that looks poorly on Sharia law. Um, we've allowed it again to grow into something that it shouldn't be. And it's becoming stronger and stronger every day that we don't lead from the front. Obama and, and Hillary, by avoiding the phrase radical Islam, they're, they're being politically correct. They don't see it for what it is. And that's straight up destroying the Western world. Radical Islam doesn't have a fear. They will give up their lives. They will detonate themselves. They will do anything they can to fulfill Sharia law and kill the infidels. If we're not able to even say radical Islam, the word radical Islam, there's no way we can fight it. There's no way we can defeat it. The United States of America doesn't lead from behind. We're always setting the example. If not, we're going to see terrorism get bigger and bigger, and eventually it's just going to be continual lone wolf attacks in the United States. And I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want to see my family go through that. Please join me in waking up Washington in this fight on radical Islam, seeing the threat that it really is. Sign up at leadingfromthefront.org. Breaking news, according to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were at Common Sense, hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Reaver Common Sense Show, hosted by Jersey Joe, Right here on shrmedia.com and hyphensdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cop for the stupid bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Socko as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mutt Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, 
Live rebooting Liberty and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. Listening to the SHR Media Network. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense show. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, if you want to watch a broadcast, you can go to Reaver.1. Click on the live stream. You can watch broadcast, and that is where you can find the live chat. You can also listen to the show and join the live chat or watch the live show and join the live chat. Got a couple options there for you. If you want to support the show, you can go to reverb.one backslash shop. That is R-E-A-V-E-R dot O-N-E backslash S-H-O-P. All right, BZ, where were we? I know we were bitching about the this uh, the environmental. I mean, I believe I'm very much into we need to protect the environment uh, as an uh, I'm a fisher I love fishing and I can tell who the liberals are and who the conservatives are when I'm out fishing because conservatives are very much about cleaning up and they they watch how much fish they catch and I've actually asked it independent of saying oh well you know because you did this you're a conservative no I'll be like getting a conversation pull out what they are and the ones that are overfishing leaving a mess are the liberals because they expect somebody else is going to do a form. And, and, and I, but they're the ones that push the issues the most. Now, I believe what we got going on now is they want to cut, oops, they want to cut their foot off. What happened to my audio? They want to cut the leg off because we stubbed our toes with the environment. Well, you're sort of cutting the nose uh, off to spite the face. Here's a perfect, absolutely ridiculous, if if this was some other purple-skied planet, you wouldn't think that this would have occurred, but it actually did. In the central Sacramento Valley, there happens to be, and the, the central area is, is replete with what they call the Sacramento Delta, and to a certain degree, up the Delta, there comes salt water, and then it becomes fresh water. And the delta is uh, around uh, the northern Sacramento Valley, Stockton, Sacramento, right around through there. And there is a small fish, which is essentially nothing more than a bait fish, uh, yeah. ranging from from three yep. to four inches, called the delta yep. smelt. Well, of course, the uh, fishing game <laughs> does studies, and they collect uh, numbers of these these fish, and the numbers have dwindled for a bait fish. In the Delta. At last count, this was uh, 2014 uh, when this occurred. In 2014, they came up with a count of six Delta smelt. In 2014, that was also uh, right around the middle, 2014, 2015, the middle of the California drought. So in order to keep a bait fish Alive, And, of course, as, as we mentioned before, Fornicalia is, is one of the great uh, agricultural bread baskets in the United States. Great land, but for land, you have to have water. So in order to have water, you access it through the delta, rivers, uh, water tables, etc. Well, what the fish and game people decided to do, and this is on a federal level, to keep a bait fish alive, they allowed trillions – let me stop and say that again, trillions with a T, trillions of gallons of water to flow unimpeded from the mountains. And there are various ways to trap it and stop it and divert it, but they decided that they did not need to do that 
So they pissed away during a drought in Fornicalia trillions of gallons of water out into the Pacific Ocean in order to keep six, yes, count them, six, Delta smelt alive. And these are not my statistics. These are not the statistics of someone on the right-hand fringe. These are statistics that have come out of the state of California and the federal government, and that's exactly what they did. And it's just – it is staggeringly, brain-glazingly, ridiculously stupid what they did in the midst of a drought. But that's how absolutely stultifying, ridiculous leftists are and can be, certainly in this state. It's a man-made drought. And I think they're doing it not because of the fish, but because they want to cause the drought to take more control. Because if you look at uh, some of the Agenda 21 issues with the uh, UN, one of the things that they recommend is they take control of waterways and all that. And what's a better way to control the people? You control the water. And that's what they've done in California. They've taken a large control because they're controlling when you guys get water and when you don't by creating this man-made drought and it helps prove their point of or they think it helps prove their point of global warming which anybody who would have a brain can see they're creating most all the situations you know you mentioned that that brings up to my mind two very interesting points about the state of fornicalia there is a, a an extremely left county uh on the coast of of uh Fornicalia, just slightly above um, San Francisco, imagine that, called Marin County. And in Marin County, rainwater that falls from the sky, you, you cannot collect it. Rainwater, according to Marin County, belongs to them. <laughs> Yeah, it I, does not belong to you. It belongs to them. So you cannot catch it. You cannot hold it. You cannot use it. You must simply let it fall. That's just – that's insanity unbridled, absolutely My response unbridled. would be then keep it off my property. <laughs> if it comes on my property, it is now mine. Uh, we got something it, similar in Florida, but it, it – they don't enforce it. I, I don't see them enforce it. What's funny is they have it, but then, like, my county has these – they teach his classes on rain collections to help with your garden so you don't have to be using, you know, the drinkable water and all that. You can use the rainwater for your gardens, and they give you rain barrels, you know, free. Here, collect the water. Help save the environment. But then they have these laws hidden away that you're not allowed to do it. I think the worst is I – um Maryland, they want to tax you on the rain falling on your property because it's eroding certain areas away. So to offset the cost to repairing those areas that are eroded by rainwater, they're going to tax you on the rain that falls on your house. Well, it was interesting in the not too terribly distant past, and it may still, um, the, the EPA may, may still consider this. But they wanted to be able to uh, step onto your property if you if you had low points on your property and rain uh, collected in vernal pools. The federal government wanted to have a say as to what happened uh, with those vernal pools and collected water on your property. That's abs- that again, again. That's just amazing. The intrusion that the federal – I used to work for the federal government. The, the intrusion into people's lives with regard to that is, in fact, uh, staggering. And you cannot convince me – man is, is fairly intelligent – but you cannot convince me that a couple of things don't and aren't occurring already. Weather is cyclical. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are incredibly arrogant. To think that we could possibly know at this point how these cycles occur, how they have occurred over not just a couple of hundred years when we've been collecting statistics, not just through decades, but whether it occurs, it's been occurring and cycling for thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands, Mm -hmm. 
millions of years. And to think that we know exactly how these cycles operate and to think that we know that we can foretell how they're going to occur in the future is is amazing. Uh, the Yeah, but they can't predict the tomorrow's arrogant. weather. Of us to think that we know how this is going to occur. I don't think that we have that ability. Certainly, the technology would lead people to believe, obviously, that they think that we can predict the future. How many times have you had a prediction from the weather particular person, and then you look out the window and you say to yourself, "Doesn't this bastard actually look out the window himself?" Yeah, I did. That's I had just said that we can't predict tomorrow's weather with a fifty percent accuracy. But the one thing is, my father was a grand or was a farmer. And one of the things he taught me is you pay attention to the farmer's almanac. That thing is more dead on than any weatherman or uh, climate Scientologist, whatever the hell they call themselves. And the one thing we have is every 25 years. Oh, hang on. I just saw a headline. Bill Nye, the science guy, blames Louisiana flooding on global warming. So too much rain is global warming, no rain is global warming, cold weather is global warming, hot weather is global warming. What isn't global warming? Well, well everything, and isn't that, uh, as the church lady says, how convenient yep. must that be? Well, it's readily convenient. It's it's climate change. Yes, Cli- there is climate change. It, the climate changes. does change. Well, my grandfather said every 20, 25 years you will have a cycle. And I kind of started thinking back and kind of like I remember in the 70s when I was born, you know, when I was a kid, there was a heavy snows up and I was with a Pennsylvania, New Jersey area. We get heavy snows. Then 80s, it kind of tapered off. Then the 90s, it started to kick back in. And now they're getting friggin blizzards up there. And it's it's just you go through little cycles where it goes a little hot, a little cold, a little hot. And when you look at the increase in temperatures during the 80s, it coincides with large solar flares that were happen. As the solar flares are calming down, we're starting to get cold weather coming in. And it, it, it's, Well, it's interesting you should point that out because solar flares do have quite a bit uh, to do, and the moon as well, yeah. uh, with uh, the, the climate on, on the planet. If you watch, for example... I, I'm a fan of Deadliest Catch. I, oh, for whatever reason, I really, I really enjoy watching Deadliest Catch. Well, you can look at the the winters in Deadliest Catch and see that the the pack ice has been increasing over the years up in the Bering Sea. You know, if it increases someplace else, yes, it probably decreases in another. That that's called logic. You know, for every scientist that you can show or bring to me that says that uh, there's a global catastrophe um, on, the, on the cusp of occurring. I can show you another scientist, the creator of the Weather Channel, for example, oh, yeah. who says that that's absolute bunk. For every scientist that you bring to me that says that it's getting hotter and it is, in fact, global warming, I can show you a bevy of scientists who believe that we're on the cusp of another ice age. We were in uh, a bit of an ice age in the 1800s. As well, the seventies they were screaming example. about that that we're going to hit an ice age in the seventies. Oh my God, prepare for the ice age. Yes. Well, here's another one. Uh, Paul Ehrlich was a scientist in the sixties because that's when I grew up. Who wrote a book called The Population Bomb? And Paul Ehrlich said that because of the grand, burgeoning, exploding uh, number of persons that were on the planet, that we're all going to die. And so the bottom line is we're all going to die. If any leftist comes up with uh, global warming, et cetera, we're all going to die. Well, isn't that odd? We didn't explode. There was no real population bomb, so to speak. Um, And oddly enough, we're still here. Mm -hmm. So I take all of this stuff with a grain of salt. Well, except for the BBC, who now says that any mention of anti-global warming uh, will not be broadcast, and anyone making a claim of that will simply – there will not be ad. So the leftists have spoken. This is the way it's going to be. We will brook no dissent whatsoever. Good to know. It seems to me, and I was actually making a comment on – I forget where it was on uh, Facebook – that if they can't win the argument, 
that they will shut down the argument. They can't win on facts and reason. So their only other recourse is to shut down the the discussion so that they are the only voice out there so they can go, see, we are right. Everybody's backing us. Nobody's speaking against us. And that's the only way they're going to be able to win is by shutting down the free speech to talk against them. They tried doing it through intimidation, and it's not working nowadays. Uh, that's already the state of affairs on on our college campuses. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the snowflakes require their own little safe spaces, etc., because they can, in fact, book no dissent. Uh, dissent of any kind results in in tears, uh, finger pointing, uh, hysterical pants shiting, uh, that sort of thing, and then they they cannot take it. It's an emotive argument as opposed to bring me when I want to know something. I want to know. Bring me facts. When I was a, uh, a supervisor, um, you had to bring me facts. Tell me what it is that the, the problem is, and then bring me facts, bring me solutions. I don't want to hear what you think. I want to hear what it is that you know. And not so much with college campuses. They're some of the places of the least amount of free thinking or creativity when, in fact, they believe the exact opposite that they are absolute citadels of clear, creative, and free thinking. That's absolutely not the case. No. It's, it, it boggles my mind how they can claim to have any free thinking when there's no opposing. Um, example, I just, I'll, I'm going to discuss it more tomorrow on the show, is Michael Bloomberg is demanding that the John Locke uh, interview be cut from the court gun control film. Because it actually dismantles a lot of the anti-gun rhetoric that he pushes. So now he wants it removed from the film because the film is actually not doing what they wanted. It's actually giving a a neutral opinion it was. So now they're going to edit it and he wants certain things removed so he can get his anti-gun view out there as the only view that's allowed. they, they try it on so many different levels from global warming to politics to their anti-gun rhetoric. And it, it just it goes on and on. And it, that's one that I will never shut up on is the anti-gun bullshit. I, 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 I oh, sorry. It pisses me off with uh, Michael Bloomberg. They go after the NRA saying the NRA can't get involved, but Bloomberg's allowed to be involved. He's allowed to buy elections. Well, the funny thing is, I um, I was a sheepdog. I'm still a sheepdog. I am an oath keeper. I promised to. I, I took an oath. I promised to keep my oath. Um, the Second Amendment, in my opinion, exists for the First Amendment and all the rest of the amendments and the Bill of Rights. Um, it exists to keep us free. The borders exist to keep us free. Sovereignty exists mm-hmm. to keep us free. Um, it's, it's disappointing to think that there are so few people now who have the ability to understand just where it is that, uh, what and how brilliant our founding fathers, uh, absolutely were, that they created this thing, these things, um, so that their, their negative rights, the constitution, the bill of rights exist in terms of negative rights not positive rights. In other words, what if you read the Bill of Rights and, and look at the Constitution, it tells the government not what it can do, but it tells the government what it can't do with the people uh, of primary importance uh, in number one. It says the government cannot do these things throughout all of the amendments. Uh, and, and that's the way it, it truly ought to be. I, I can think of no other successful government uh, on the planet, except for Oz. And, and yep. in my opinion, it, it's being threatened. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hillary has already said that all of our constitutional amendments, the government has the right to regulate, which I thought I was brought up that that's our constitutional rights. That's why they're there. So the government can't regulate those rights. And she has said it's not just the Second Amendment that I'm fighting it for. It's not just the first. It's all of them that she says that the government and her as president would have right to regulate. 
And, and people just automatically think we're arguing because we love our guns and all that. No, I love all my freedoms, so I'm trying to fight for all of my freedoms, not just for me, for everybody. Because there's so many lemmings on this goddamn continent right now that they don't understand the freedoms they have and are willing to give them up just for an ounce of illusion of safety. And that's all it is, is the illusion. Well, it is an illusion of safety. I'll, I'll go so far as to, as to say this. Um, and I, I, you know, someone may call me a, a tinfoil hat wearer, but ultimately... Uh, Admiral Grace Hopper will will be mm, pretty much the downfall of the entire planet. And what I mean by that is this. She created uh, the system known as COBOL, which then became basically the, the digital age, the creation of ones and zeros. And ladies and gentlemen, anything that you can digitize, anything that works on a digital system, can be hacked. Anything. The NSA yeah. has been hacked. The FBI has been hacked. The DNC has been hacked. You've been hacked. You just don't know. Uh, the, the, the NSA is a massive collector of information, and there isn't anything that exists digitally that cannot be hacked. I'm sure you probably, uh, I would wager that your listeners already realize that aircraft, new aircraft, have been hacked, and uncommanded controls have been made in the air, unbeknownst to most people, because Boeing, Airbus, etc., don't want that information out in the age. But if it connects to the Internet, if it is digital, it can be hacked. Automobiles have already been hacked. Anything that is digital can be hacked. And you, we're getting to a point where there is no privacy. I'm a, I'm a great advocate of privacy. I'm a bit of a libertarian, not a large L libertarian, because some of the things that libertarians, in my opinion, happen to embrace are completely out the door. But I'm a small L libertarian. I believe in a smaller government, and I also believe in privacy. People need to be left the hell alone to do and create as they will, mm -hmm. and then everything else will sort of revolve around that. But we have no privacy now. It's only going to get worse. And then when you digitize and remove cash, when you have a cashless society, the government can do anything that it wants in inflationary times, in deflationary times. It can reach into your accounts. You've heard, I'm sure, of uh, negative interest. Uh, when you go to a cashless society, the government can create penalties for your savings, and they can insist essentially that you not save, that you can spend in times when it benefits the government. They can create controls that make you want to spend in times that benefit the government. They can make you save when you when you don't necessarily want to save. When you go to a digital cashless society, then you have ceded ultimate control of your fiscal future to the government, any government. Hmm. I never thought of that point. That's actually a pretty good point. Um, and the one thing I want, because I have no problem talking about it, I was looking into, because the Republican Party has somewhat disenfranchised me, but the Libertarian Party, I started looking into local and I noticed this on a national level, too. The one thing I don't like is um, th there's a group of them that it seems that if you disagree with them, if you have your own independent thought, you get verbally attacked. And, you know, it's the whole, if you don't agree with me, you're against the Constitution, screaming and shouting in your face type. Now, that pushed me away from the Libertarian Party. And also some of the uh, openness that they're, f you know, they're pro-everything. Um that kind of pushed me away. I, I'm for the smaller government, but I'm not for downsizing our military. I, I'm not for the the, um, and I not all, I know I know not all of them are for all of this type of ideology. The the isolationist type ideology. I am highly against. I don't want to get involved in everybody's problems, 
But as a nation, we have always, and worldwide, when we have led, when we've been, I guess, for lack of a better word, the police of the world, the world has been a lot more peaceful. And I think it's in our best interest that we go back to leading and we go back to being the police of the world for our own safety. And I, that's just some of the libertarian that I have seen that it, it just, I can't go to that. I couldn't. I mean, it, it's it, it, some of the ideology that they push scares me. Uh, and again, I know it's not all of them, but within my area, I was looking at some of the meetings online, the video of it, and just people getting uh, almost to the point of violence, screaming at people. Well, if you don't agree with us, you're against us. And I'm like, uh, I'm done. I'm away. I tend to be a bit of a media, excuse me, a menu man. I, I tend to have crafted my philosophy by stealing bits and pieces from all sorts of sources, from the Republicans, from conservatives, and from the libertarians. I'm a little bit of a libertarian, small L, but the things that I grandly disagree with are uh, the removal of borders. Libertarians yep. are essentially uh, – they're not much interested in, in sovereignty, and in my opinion, countries cannot exist without borders yeah. and sovereignty. The perfect example of the detrimental effects of something like that, all you have to do is cast your eye over to Europe and what's happening in the EU right now. Yeah. The second portion of that is hot and cold running drugs. Having worked in law enforcement, I see what's occurring and what has occurred with regard to drugs. Cal uh, Colorado and Washington – are experiencing, because of the legalization of, of marijuana, uh, things that they're simply not prepared for. They're not prepared for the accident rate having gone up. They're not prepared, prepared for the ODs that are occurring. They're not prepared for the children that are accessing this sort of thing. You know, marijuana is okay within reason, um, and it, it, I would wager that it probably has a, a medicinal use. I've not applied it. Uh, there's a history for that. My mother smoked like a furnace. That's what everybody <laughs> did uh, when they were uh, men and women in, in World War II, the greatest generation. Everyone smoked like crazy. And because my mother would, would ensconce us into the automobile in the dead of winter and not allow the windows to be rolled down, well, even during the summer, and then she'd light up a cigarette, and it would look like uh, you know downtown Calcutta on a very bad, bad day inside the automobile, I don't really care for smoking. That's just me. But the unbridled usage of drugs uh, with little or no control except for taxes for the state, and that's another separate entity and story whatsoever. Uh, no, I'm, I can't say that I'm for hot and cold, unbridled running drugs all the time. The other thing that I find disturbing is that Gary Johnson, who's the libertarian candidate right now, is uh, made a statement, I think it was this year or late last year, one of the two. He was on a particular radio show and said that essentially he wanted to eliminate the U.S. carrier groups. That's just insanity. The U.S. has 11 carrier groups right now. Um, a carrier group is uh, sort of an operational formation of the, of the Navy, uh, it consists of uh, at least one carrier, one cruiser, a uh, squadron of destroyers, um, at least two destroyers, uh, some frigates, and a, a carrier air wing of, I don't know, they usually have like 60 to 70 aircraft. And what they also don't want to know you is that with each carrier group, there's also a, an attack sub somewhere around there, a Los Angeles-class attack sub or something like that. If you get rid of carrier... Carrier groups are the extension of America power. They're like airports at sea, and when we need to go to support our people or those that, that we have sworn to support, you cannot go eliminating that. You cannot go wholesale eliminating America's extended power. You, yeah. you know, there, there are two groups of, of classes, uh, two groups of countries, countries that rule – what they call blue water. They have the blue water navy, which is deep water, and the littorals. And the littorals are like um, – they're close to shore. They're uh, shallow water. We have – we're one of the, the few countries that have a rampant and functioning, at least for a time, blue water navy. 
uh, the Chinese, the Soviets, etc. The Soviets are rebuilding, and the Chinese have a remarkable and expanding blue water navy. This is absolutely the wrong time to be spouting off ridiculous things like that. So once you have an individual who says something as, in my opinion, as obscene as that, you've proven to me that you're a retard, and you can't be listened to, and you can't be exceeded any any amount of, of credence whatsoever. I'm sorry, but Gary Johnson... By yeah. just saying that, you've, you've proven to me that you're a goon, and I, I can't listen or put any any background or veracity to anything that you tell me in the future. You're a moron. Exactly. And it's – I think some of the libertarians that they have being more boisterous are the ones that are doing more harm to the party, and uh, Gar- hey, Johnson's one of them. He, I think he's doing more harm to that party. Than anything good. Um, I hate to cut it, but um, I'm actually running late for that uh, for break. Um, and I think that's when you said you actually had to get going. So uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, I, you're welcome anytime you want. You got the number. Just call on in. So. Well, thank you ever so kindly, Jersey Joe. It was a pleasure. It was great to meet you. I hope your uh, audience expands exponentially, and it was absolutely grand to speak to you. Thank you kindly for having me aboard, sir. No problem, sir, and uh, I'll hopefully, like I said, speak to you again. And uh, you've been listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising, Speaker, YouTubes, and iTunes. We will be right back. Listening to the SHR Media Network. Now, for Amels, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. My name is Chris Peranto, call sign Tonto. I was with the Global Response Staff. We were the security element for the Central Intelligence Agency in Benghazi, Libya on 9-11-2012. Myself and my team responded to an attack that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens. Sean Smith and two of my teammates, Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Radical Islam is basically terrorism in a nutshell. It uh, it wants to not only put down Western values, it wants to kill anybody that supports those Western values, which is freedom, which is Christianity, and which is also anything that looks poorly on Sharia law. Um, We've allowed it again to grow into something that it shouldn't be, and it's becoming stronger and stronger every day that we don't lead from the front. Obama and, and Hillary, by avoiding the phrase radical Islam, they're, they're being politically correct. They don't see it for what it is. And that's straight up destroying the Western world. Radical Islam doesn't have a fear. They will give up their lives. They will detonate themselves. They will do anything they can to fulfill Sharia law and kill the infidels. If we're not able to even say radical Islam, the word radical Islam, there's no way we can fight it. There's no way we can defeat it. The United States of America doesn't lead from behind. We're always setting the example. If not, we're going to see terrorism get bigger and bigger, and eventually it's just going to be continual lone wolf attacks in the United States. And I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want to see my family go through that. Please join me in waking up Washington in this fight on radical Islam, seeing the threat that it really is. Sign up at leadingfromthefront.org. Breaking news, according to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. Thank
to Rewrite Our Comics and hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time, you can catch the Rebirth Common Sense Show, hosted by Jersey Joe, right here on shrmedia.com and highthingsdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else, so consider this your fair warning. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mud Show with its hosts, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. The take Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, if you want to watch a broadcast or if you want to be part of the show, it's easy. You go to Reaver dot one, click on the live stream. You can join the live chat and be part of the conversation. Or you can also, well, and I should say, you can watch a live broadcast or listen to a live broadcast as you chat away. And lastly, if you want to support the show and support SHR Media, go to Reaver dot one backslash shop. That is R E A V E R dot O N E backslash S H O P. We have T-shirts, we have uh, survival bracelets, we have um, pocket constitutions. So we had uh, BZ was our guest, and we went over a bunch of uh, topics um, that I didn't actually plan on even talking about that. But anybody that listens to my show knows that, well, there's really no format. I kind of have a tendency to jump all over the place. One of the things I wanted to talk to is this presidential polling that's going on. 
it, the mainstream media has been caught tampering with data. And if you look at the online polling, and I know it's not totally accurate, but you can't have that big of a difference between the two results. Then take a look at Facebook page likes for Trump versus Hillary. Now remember, it's Hillary is with the Democrats who the Democrats are the ones that push presidential elections and all that onto social media. It was the Democrats who really, I don't want to say invented that, but for can't think of a better word. They're the ones that invented using it, the social media for presidential elections and since then other elections. It, it, it's it's uh, been a standard way of gauging support for a candidate by how many likes they have, looking at Twitter followers. But when you start taking into the big picture of the Facebook like differences, the Twitter follow differences, the rally numbers, it, it, you got a huge difference. And it's not matching up with these polls that are put out online. Well, not online, but the results that are coming out. The polls online are heavily favoring in Trump's direction. And I'm talking like a 70-30 difference. 70% for Trump, 30% for Hillary, Johnson, and Jill Stein. When you start looking at the rallies... I mean, recently, um, 37, oh, this is uh, the live streaming of the events, I should say. 37 people watch Trump's live stream of his speech in Wisconsin on Tuesday night. But as noted previously, Clinton is only averaging 500 per live stream of her, of her event. That is a result in a ratio of 74 to 1. To date, only a little bit more than 8,000 have watched Hillary's speech in West Philadelphia the same day as Trump's speech in Wisconsin. According to Hillary Clinton's speeches and events, while Trump has accumulated more than 66,000 viewers to date, that is a ratio of more than 8 to 1. Let me... Uh, I got to pull up some numbers real quick. Sorry about this. When you go to Donald Trump and you look at, let's see if I can find it. 10.4 million people. Hang on. Shit. Wrong button. Sorry, I should have had all this information to start with. All right, let me get one more piece of information, and then we will be ready to go. Well, then I have to pull up uh, another bit of information, but I'll have the majority of it. Uh, do do do. I really have to shut the sound off on that. And I don't know how to. So, when we're looking at Facebook, okay, and we're looking at numbers, Trump has 10,421,400 likes on Facebook. Compared to Hillary Clinton's, 5,637,001 likes. That is a huge difference in numbers. 
And that right there shows a major difference and support. I, I mean, it, it, I find it funny. I really do that there's uh, that big of a difference. And yet, and it's not just the um, Facebook. It's also Twitter. It's all the social media. The numbers are staggering different. Picking up one last set of numbers. Twitter's lower. All right, coming up with the last of the numbers. Now, when you go to Twitter, Trump has 11.1 million followers, where Hillary Clinton has 8.4 million followers. I mean, there's a common thread that is going on here. And that common thread is Trump having higher numbers. When you go on these online polls, I'm always seeing Trump winning. The only polls that I don't see him winning are these polls being released by uh, the mainstream media. And the polling numbers being shown on the mainstream media are totally false. And since we cannot factual can, can cannot get factual information from the mainstream media, this group of college kids decided that they were going to call 1000 homes in each of the 50 states and ask basic questions on economy, terrorism, immigration, and presidential pick. Economy was the number one factor that Americans are concerned about. And terrorism was number two. Presidential picture was Trump by a large percentage. Trump with 33,478 votes at 67%. Clinton at 9,788 votes at 19%. Undecided or other at 6,739 votes with 13%. Polling was taken by registered voter lists. They accumulated 33% Republican, 33% Democrat, and 34% Independent. Our polls consisted of 1,000 calls per state. All 50 states, 50,000 people are in this poll, not the 100 or 200 of the polls conducted by mainstream media when they only called like 400 people and they want to base their polls on that. And then they have a habit of only picking certain Democrat or political group. They've been caught tampering with the results. And one of them, they ripped out the 18 to 34 year old age group because they didn't like the results that they got in the poll, so they had to remove that age group to put Hillary ahead. Another one, and a lot of them, if you look, they're heavily Democratic involved people, and when you start looking at the areas that they were calling, they were calling in high Hillary support areas. This is the misinformation that they're giving, and a lot of people ask, well, why would they give the misinformation? It's simple psychology that people want to back a winner. 
So when they see that Hillary's leading by these large numbers, or were leading by these large numbers, well, then they start saying, well, there's no use in voting for Trump. Hillary's going to win it, so I might as well not waste my vote, and I'll vote for Hillary. And that's the mentality some people have, right, wrong, or indifferent. And that's what they're counting on when they put out these false polls. And with that, we're going to go to commercial, our last commercial, then we'll go on interrupted to the end of the show. And you're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, Speaker, YouTube, and iTunes. We will be right back. Now, for Arnell's, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. My name is Chris Peranto, call sign Tonto. I was with the Global Response Staff. We were the security element for the Central Intelligence Agency in Benghazi, Libya on 9-11-2012. Myself and my team responded to an attack that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, and two of my teammates, Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Radical Islam is basically terrorism in a nutshell. It, uh, It wants to not only put down Western values, it wants to kill anybody that supports those Western values which is freedom, which is Christianity, and which is also anything that looks poorly on Sharia law. Um, We've allowed it again to grow into something that it shouldn't be. And it's becoming stronger and stronger every day that we don't lead from the front. Obama and and Hillary, by avoiding the phrase radical Islam, they're, they're being politically correct. They don't see it for what it is. And that's straight up destroying the Western world. Radical Islam, doesn't have a fear. They will give up their lives. They will detonate themselves. They will do anything they can to fulfill Sharia law and kill the infidels. If we're not able to even say radical Islam, the word radical Islam, there's no way we can fight it. There's no way we can defeat it. The United States of America doesn't lead from behind. We're always setting the example. If not, we're going to see terrorism get bigger and bigger, and eventually it's just going to be continual lone wolf attacks in the United States. And I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want to see my family go through that. Please join me in waking up Washington in this fight on radical Islam, seeing the threat that it really is. Sign up at leadingfromthefront.org. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were a common sense hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time, you can catch the Rebirth Common Sense Show hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and highplainsdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt 
politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying calf was stupid, bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on SHR Media. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mud Show with its hosts, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guide. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense show. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm making sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember to join the live chat. Go to Reaver.one and click on the live stream where you can also watch a live broadcast. But you can also join live chat and be a part of the show, and you can join the conversation. If you want to support the show, support SHR Media, go to Reaver.one backslash shop and pick yourself up a t-shirt. We got Blue Lives Matter, thin blue line American flag t-shirts. Show your support. We have... Pro Second Amendment. We have the anti Hillary shirts. And we have, of course, the Reaver of Common Sense t shirts. All starting at fourteen ninety nine. These are custom made to order. And there's also survival bracelets that are also custom made when you order them. So, go to reaver.one backslash shop. That is R-E-A-V-E-R dot O-N-E backslash S-H-O-P. Get them while you can. So, we're talking about these polls that are online. And it just, they are nowhere near the data that is out there. The online polls are overwhelmingly in favor of Trump. You had some College kids do a poll, and it ended up being 67% for Trump, 19% for Clinton. You have, when you look at the Facebook pages, there's 10.4 million likes for Trump, 5.6 for Hillary. 
When you look at the Twitter followers, you have 11.1 million for Trump and 8.4 for Hillary. When you further look at that and you look at the live streams, you get 37,000 for Trump and 500 for Hillary for a ratio of 74 to 1. When you look at uh, online videos of Hillary's speech in West Philadelphia, at the same day that Trump gave a speech in Wisconsin, you have 8,000 that watched Hillary's, 66,000 that watched Trump's. That's an 8 to 1 ratio. The numbers are overwhelming, but yet the mainstream media is screaming that it's either a tight race or that Hillary is winning by a landslide. You even have new polls that are now swinging that Hillary is behind in the mainstream polls. And, and, and I, I wonder, I, I, all right, Donald Trump takes Sundays off. That's his day off. Hillary Clinton seems to take Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays off. The number of events are staggering. Seven days have been taken off by Hillary in August. In just the first 17 days. And is not scheduled for another campaign event. I think until this Sunday will be the first one she does on a weekend. This means Hillary is working on her campaign 50% of the time. And the mad uh, average American is wondering if she will put the same 50% lackluster effort if she's elected to president. She has taken a lot of time off, whereas Donald Trump has only taken two days off in August. Sunday, August 7th, and Sunday, August 14th, and has seven days where he has participated in more than one campaign event. And when you look at the numbers there, total estimated attendance, well, let let me back that up, sorry. Number of events is 22 events from August 1st to August 17th for Donald J. Trump. For a total estimated attendance at 110,680, with an average estimated attendance of 5,031. Then you look at Hillary from August 1st through August 17th. She has done 11 events and has the estimated attendance total of 14,500. Average estimated attendance is 1,318. So let's put them together next to each other. Donald Trump for total events, 22. Hillary, total events, 11. These are the same time frame. Total estimated attendance for Donald J. Trump, 110,680. Total estimated attendance for Hillary Clinton, 14,500. Estimated average attendance for Donald J. Trump, 5,031. Estimated average attendance for Hillary, 1,318. Tell me again how she is in the lead in the polls. Everything is screaming. She is majorly behind. But the mainstream media is, as our government has, this liberal government has been doing, has been artificially inflating our economy. Well, the liberal media is now artificially inflating Hillary Clinton's campaign. Now imagine if a mainstream media got caught artificially inflating a Republican candidate. 
The rest of them would be going ape shit over it, trying to prove it wrong. And their their theory is working because I had to talk someone down from the ledge the other day who was sitting there going, I might as well give up. Hillary Clinton is just going to win anyway. Look at the polls. And I had to explain the Facebook likes, the Twitter followers, the rally numbers, the online poll numbers, the live video viewers. And then it even it like it, I explained that well why why are they doing it? And I had explained because it gives where like him himself had given up and you know it's a it lost cause. Which now has him a little pissed off. And rightfully so. They're playing games and they're trying to swing and they're trying to um influence the election. And I always thought that influencing elections, especially with false information, could be construed as illegal tampering. But of course, our current federal law enforcement couldn't, wouldn't investigate those type of legal activity because our administration is protecting their party instead of protecting the people. Now, this one I'm finding funny because a lot of this uh, social media or social justice warrior bullshit is being thrown back in Hillary's face because now it's being said that she is trying to blame the rich white woman is trying to blame her problems on a black man. She's trying to say it's his fault for her illegal activity. She's trying to pass, pass the blame onto a black man. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, Hillary Clinton's people have been trying to pin the email scandal on Colin Powell, going so far as to say that he emailed me and said it was okay. Bush administration Secretary of State Colonel Powell, Colin Powell, excuse me, complained about his recent appearance in the headlines in connection with Hillary Clinton's private email server scandal. Her people have been trying to pin it on me, Powell told People magazine in the Hamptons this weekend. Powell was referring to Clinton's interview with FBI interrogators in which she claimed that Powell told her in a memo that he used a private email server as Secretary of State and that she could too. But Powell made clear to People that he is not involved in the Clintons' mess. The truth is, she was using the private email server for a year before I sent her a memo telling her what I did. So Clinton's excuse with FBI falls completely flat, according to Powell. It doesn't bother me, but it's okay. I'm free. Powell's representatives recently put out a statement saying that Powell only used his private AOL account for unclassified communications. Even the Washington Post thought Clinton's claim to the FBI was just plain wrong. I love this. Uh, Fox is like having a field day because they think they have Donald Trump flip flop. And when it's been said, he's not he's not changing it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they're just trying to start shit. They are no better than CNN or MSNBC at this point. They're just attacking to attack. They have a bunch of anti-Trump people on their outnumbered. And it's sickening. And uh, and 
よね。え、え、つ。They want him to calm down his way of speaking. So he tries to calm down on his speaking. So they attack him saying he's flip flopping. No, his stance is still there. He's just not trying to be so hurtful to people's feelings. Oh. Uh, it, it's. And then this hit the news that 13 were shot at a house party in gun controlled Connecticut. We also have dozen shot, four killed over weekend in gun controlled Chicago. All these gun controlled states seem to be having a lot of shootings. But yet, oh, oh, of course, according to the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, Connecticut has universal background checks, no gun show loophole, a ban on high capacity magazines, and a prohibition on the transfer of possessions of assault weapons. But yet they still have all these shootings going to the point that, geez, your gun control laws do not work. Period. They're not successful. You can add all the laws you want. It's not going to stop the criminals. You could even try banning the guns in this country. And it's not going to stop the criminals from owning weapons. I, I seem to recall box cutters were the direct cause of 9-11, box cutters, simple box cutters. A pressure cooker was directly responsible for Boston Marathon. There was, I forget the name of the college it was. They had a mass stabbing going on out there. Criminals and psychos and terrorists do not need guns to commit their heinous crimes. Anybody that has malice in their hearts will find a way. So making law-abiding citizens defenseless is not the answer. proof where have all these incidents been taking place they've been happening on gun free zones and they want Obama tries to distract the conversation away from the failure of gun control and wants to come up with the myth of the gun show loophole when the fewer than 1% of state prison inmates obtain their guns at the time of the offense from a gun show cost of regulations exceeds the benefit what is interesting is the remarkable consistency of the rate that criminals obtain their guns from gun shows One problem with using these surveys is that people think that if one were to actually stop all criminals from obtaining guns from gun shows or through some other way, that will automatically stop the criminals from getting guns. Yet even when there are complete bans on guns, criminals are still able to obtain them. Given how much violence, how much violent crime is drug gang related, And given how hard it is to stop drug gangs from getting illegal drugs to sell, it is just as difficult to stop these drug gangs from getting the guns that they need to protect their valuable drugs. Thus, it isn't 
too surprising that background checks on private transfers has beneficial, no impact on crime rates. None. Gun show regulations do have a cost. Almost everyone, all those stopped by background checks are false positive. A law-abiding citizen who shouldn't have been stopped. Other delays extend beyond the length of the gun show. The delays can usually take up to three business days to clear, and gun shows only last for two days over a weekend. So even if you buy a gun at the very beginning of a gun show, say Saturday morning, the federal government has until Tuesday morning before a seller is allowed to complete the sale. But by that time, the people who have traveled all the way to the show are long gone. For 2002 to 2006, 92% of checks were completed during the initial call by the dealer. About 3% of the background checks take up to two hours to complete. Another 2% take up to three business days. And 3% take three full business days. Even a two-hour delay can mean the difference between whether the sale occurs or not. After all, the next stage of the background check won't begin until the first business day, which will be after the gun show has packed up and left. That implies if you try waiting in hopes that the delay will only take two hours, there is a 63% chance that you'll have to wait the two hours and still not be able to get the gun. Forcing the gun dealers to wait on the telephone for up to a couple of hours means that the dealer can't make other gun sales. A third problem is that there are apparently more breakdowns occurring in the computer background check system. When the system checks, breaks down, no sales can be completed. Under the Clinton administration, the system was down for six days each month. That problem essentially disappeared during the Bush administration, but it appears to be back under Obama though the administration no longer keeps detailed data on how long these delays are. One consequence of these delays is that gun shows, background checks on private sales, are associated with about a 20% drop in the number of gun shows. This myth about gun show loophole is just that, a myth. It is a distraction from the real conversation that this administration does not want to have that the anti-gunners don't want to have. And that is your laws do not stop shit. Your laws interfering with Second Amendment do not stop a thing. They allow criminals to run freely That's all it does. My father is living proof that disarming the public does nothing but create victims and corpses. These gun-free states, gun-free zones create nothing but a breeding ground for criminals. They go to these areas on purpose because they want easy prey. And these anti-gun advocates are doing nothing more than helping criminals. Michael Bloomberg is doing nothing more than helping psychopaths commit their crimes. Moms Demand are doing nothing but helping criminals psychopaths murder our kids our brothers our sisters our mothers our fathers they are complicit in those crimes against humanity thank you for listening it's come to that time It sure does go by fast most days. I want to wish everybody a safe and happy day. 
I will be back tomorrow, my normal time, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Reaver of Common Sense. And tomorrow, I will be on Southside Mutt Show, hosted by the Jersey Boys, myself, Jersey Joe, and Crash. Hopefully, you'll be there. It's 8 o'clock on SHR Media. But until tomorrow, thank you for listening. Have a great day. And I didn't get the closing music up and running, did I? Oh, I got to fire myself. Have a good day. You've been listening to The Reaver of Common Sense with its host, Jersey Joe. You can tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on hbpundit.com and shrmedia.com.